Today we are going to see um, um, the time response giving a particular transfer function and we're going to uh, to learn also uh, the influence of the zeros and the poles as we call them um, from the transfer functions and how they relate to the response of the response of the system. On this screen, you you see a um, transfer function and the location of the zeros and the poles of that transfer function. And what we're going to do is to study uh, how that location uh, influences the response of the system. Okay, so let's. Um, have a little bit more spacing here and so that we can discuss this in more detail. You see, here's the transfer function, okay? Um, you have a numerator of the transfer function, you have the denominator of the transfer function. From now on, any root of the denominator is called poles okay that's something we have to we have to uh, remember all the time from now on any root of the numerator is called poles uh, excuse me zeros okay any root of the denominator are the poles any root of the numerator are the zeros so you see if you have s plus 5 and you set this to 0 S obviously is minus 5, right? That minus 5 is placed right here. This is the, the plane, the S plane in here, where we have the imaginary axis and then we have the real axis over here. This is, we are plotting um, complex numbers, right? So in here, um, you can. Um, say this is the transfer function and if 1 over s multiplies this transfer function then you have another pole because it's 1 over s you know if 1 over s is 0 is 0 right so you have one pole here you see and you have one zero here at minus 2 and then you have one pole at minus 5 that is what you have in here so the um, the response, I mean the the output, is gonna be the combination of these three factors. That's that's what C of S is. Okay, so it's like this is the first one over S, and then if you do this multiplication, you can reduce it to this fraction like this. See? And what we are going to see is that when the system responds of this transfer function, the system is going to have a false response <coughs> part and a natural response. But it's going to be like um, an oscillating response. So depending on the, on the values of the um, as we have, although in this case with the with the poles on the real axis, this uh, is not going to oscillate very much. So there you have this is in general. If you have this plane and you have in here a pole, it means that the response <coughs> of the system is of this type, okay? mathematically of this type. Um, if you have the transfer function in this form, you only have one pole, and this is called first order system, and this is the pole right here, okay? If you have this uh, response of the system, or for a first order system, you will see a rise in here up until it it reaches a steady state condition. So important to recognize in this response are several properties and points you may say of the response which we, uh, we, we should uh, 
we should look into it. Um, if you go about the um, 60 percent, 63 percent of the final value at this time, the time, this timing here, this this interval is called the time constant. And if you if you plot or examine the curve right there are several intervals of the time constant, you will have points on the curve like that to a study like like here um, um, it would be to the steady state response. So and the initial slope of the curve here is one over the time constant that would be A. And so um, in the so we have the um, the transient response and a steady state response which would be the maximum value that it reaches. If you uh, have a step input, this would be the response like that. Where is the time and then it would be the amplitude here. If you have this situation like this, you have these transfer functions are typical of this response. So for example here, if you have this transfer function, you have two poles in here and then you um, you will obtain this kind of response. If you have this uh, transfer function in here, you will get this response. If you have this one, you will get this. If you have, so the conclusion of, of this picture really is depending on what these numbers are, the system will behave differently. Okay? So um, we would need to uh, see where the, the location of this poles are on this plane and then we will um, we will see exactly what the response is. So what I would like to do is we can go we can take one of these go to MATLAB and then do the test so that we can um, we can see in fact verify what, what I'm telling you. The, the message, however, is exactly the same in regardless of the transfer function. What I'm saying is depending on what poles we have in here and what zeros we have in here, we will have a typical response like this. So as you go along and you become more proficient and practicing in this field, by looking at the transfer function, and seeing how it's configured and what is it, the poles are, you will be able to predict what the system is going to do. That's the point in this whole thing. So let, let's just go to MATLAB and do the, that test, okay? So here's the uh, MATLAB. Okay, at the MATLAB prompt, we are going to describe that transfer function. So you see the transfer function has a numerator and it has a denominator. So we are going to say that the numerator of the transfer function is equal to, um, um, you just have a nine in there, right? So that is, that is the numerator. And then the denominator of this transfer function is going to be equal to a polynomial in there where you have the x squared has coefficient one, the s has coefficient nine, and the constant uh, term is nine. And you say, okay, that's the other polynomial in here. And then now we're going to define what the transfer function is. So we call it g is equal to transfer function of the numerator and then the denominator, and then you see what we just got? This transfer function here is exactly the same as we have over here. So in order to do this, 
to see to verify this we're gonna say a step <coughs> of the function transfer function g and you see we get we get the output and that's exactly like this okay the point being that by knowing this setup of the transfer function with two poles on the real axis I can predict that the system is going to do this and so what I would like to do is I would like to try another one which uh, will find it a little more interesting on this light over here let's see which one is more interesting I would say this one then the next one huh? in here um, by tweaking those numbers do you see this has this kind of roots but if if instead of a nine we have a two the roots are complex numbers they have a real part and an, and an imaginary part and when you have this kind of roots placed here you're going to get this answer so what do we have to do to to go from this example to this just basically change the denominator right so what i what i would do is let me see if we can put it up no no we cannot put it up and we'll just i will just have to move it i just need to uh, put a two in the denominator so what i would do is do you see this command in here right here this one instead of a nine i am going to put a two yeah and click on return and then i would have to to redo the um, um, the definition now with a new which would be gs transfer function of the numerator and the denominator and now we have the we have the transfer function that we have on the back right here with the two we have it right here and if i do the now the the test for that i will get this response do you see what i'm trying to say right now and that's exactly what this is what you have right in front of you with the software so to drive my point and perhaps in solid basis what I'm trying to tell you now is that if we know how those poles are placed on the complex plane we could predict the response of a system that's the point okay so and of course the zeros have something to do with it but really the 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 what controls this the main control is in the denominator so what we are going to do here is we say okay for a moment let's um, do away with my, my lab uh, if you have this kind right here let's say you don't have this term in here do you see what has happened here is uh, you have the poles now on the imaginary axis so we suppress the second, you know, the second term. I think, um, but do you notice now that the system has become all oscillatory? What I'm going to do deliberately is to bring the poles on the right hand side and you'll see what <coughs> happens. I am going to suppress this and then just uh, you know make it a zero in there and then see see what this does see if we get this okay so let, let let's go back to our matlab prompting here and do you see um, the definition of the denominator is what we what we're after right here i would say the denominator now it is a uh, equal to ah what did we do see there it is if i put this as zero right here i have i have created that situation and if i say g is equal to the um, numerator 
and denominator what happened here oh, oh, oh. Uh, my syntax is not right I need to tell tell you what 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 what, what we're doing see right there this transfer function that you see down here yeah right here this one is what you have in here let's do the test step of g and then let's see what happens oh where is my plot in here okay Step we have this step response which is you know many many oscillations in here but um, in here I am going to venture and say instead of the denominator being a zero I am going to uh, and remember it was two before I deliberately going to make it a minus two yeah and with that I define the transfer function g again is going to be a transfer function of the numerator and the denominator yeah define it as minus 2 and if I do this step of g by the way let me see if I don't have we need to close this to see it let's see what's going to happen hmm this is interesting. Do you see what happened? It went in here and at point 25 it blew up. Do you see? So I think it's safe to say when you have roots on the right hand side or one of those coefficients on the denominator is negative, you could see that you are in either you made some mistake on the derivation of the transfer function or the system is messed up because it will actually catastrophically fail it will produce a response that instead of of damping vibration or behaving normally oscillating and then stopping it would it would actually increase the value of the response and it is no good so I think the, the, you, you see the message here that again I'm trying to give you is that manipulating those coefficients on the denominator becomes crucial in sync control systems now that you know the bond graph technique and that bond graphs can produce transfer functions in symbolic form you could see the importance of that because if you produce a transfer function in symbolic form, you know what physical parameters make, make up each coefficient. And you could say, well, if I needed to be higher, I would change either stiffness or a damping or whatever, you see? Or decrease, depending on whatever the, the case is. So having transfer functions in symbolic form in terms of the physical parameters, it's a very useful tool to be able to make the system do whatever you want. Okay, I think I made my point, and so we we are going to continue with the um, presentation in here with different now with different properties of the response. Like you could say, when you have this kind of a response, is a combination of a of an exponential decay and also of, of an oscillation. So this is sinusoidal oscillation generated by a pair of complex, by complex pole pair. So a, 
in other words this kind of roots so be able to recognize this I, I remember in the just to uh, perhaps a personal story when I was doing the PhD qualifying exam they asked me about this because you see it is such a fundamental principle that is a must to know what the roots do to the response um, so this is a simple concept but it's something you really need to know okay so here we go so we could test this this would be a different transfer function uh, you, if you test with the um, for example this is the damping coefficient right and if you increase the damping or decrease you will be more damping or less damping so in here you could uh, study uh, a system that is not damped oscillates all the time like we saw you could uh, study one that is critically damp and one that is it becomes over damp as we increase the uh, value in of the damping coefficient or critically damp as we it's just on the borderline this is a more appreciation of what we uh, what we just said I think it's worth um, looking at if you have a second order system like obviously this is you see because it it's has this square if you have this response if you have it in here you will get this if the poles are imaginary you will get this this little constant um, is called the damping ratio and it is the value of the damping of the system to to the critical damp meaning at the point where that damping becomes uh, uh, zero right so uh, in here you have a um, if you have it between zero and one you will obtain the poles like this if it is one it they would be like this so you'll get this response and if you have bigger than one what you are doing instead of moving the roots into this this area you are moving them to the left totally over damp system so this way you can see by the location of the poles the exact response you're gonna get let's take a look at some other um, uh, systems in here now what 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 would we have what influence would it have if you change the numerator let's say like this this have um, 12 like in here and you have a 20 over here or you make a change like this it's all we will what we will obtain is this kind of things you will have see the damping ratio would be 0 0.8, 0 0.6, 0 0.2, 0 0.1 and the, so the the point being is that you can tweak the way the response will be by changing those numbers that's the whole idea here and in here you have a, um, uh, a more detailed analysis of what I what I told you about um, decomposing the signal you know on the maximum value and how it would, would oscillate until it see finally the so-called steady state response so uh, I would like to ask you to read this please in chapter 4 to reinforce what I'm telling you I think um, I think you will be glad you did because these are basic things that you might you must know because what is coming later is I am going to ask you to modify the transfer function 
to obtain a certain damping ratio or to place the poles on a certain place. And that's why you need to go over that. Okay. This is a... Um, this is again... Um, you know, the overshoot is the amount that goes over the value and be, you know, with respect to the steady state response. These are several experiments in here um, of changing the damping ratio and then looking at uh, the rise time. You could do different things, but this picture that you have in here, you must have it in your mind. This one, forever and ever, should be engraved in your mind because it is a generalized statement of the defini basic definition. Like, if these are the roots right here, complex roots, the distance between the origin to that root, this is the natural frequency of the system. And also the um, the damping ratio is, is defined as a uh, psi times uh, the natural frequency, which would be this value right here, all right? And uh, this one, this would be the imaginary part, omega n is square root of one minus the damping ratio in the square. So this is also, this part, you know, this would be um, the damp, damped frequency. So this is the natural frequency, this would be the damped frequency. So that's why this is important for you to remember. Okay, here you, we can play around with the, with several definitions on the complex plane. This would be, um, uh, if you have a, certain percentage overshoot you would be following this line or this other line again it's, it's about the same thing where are those poles and depending on where they are the system does different things you see okay let's let's examine this for example on the on if the poles are here at, on the one follow the one you will get this answer if you move them to two you will get this answer and if you move them to three you will get this answer so the envelope is the same but obviously if you are going up do you see the frequency increases and remember, this was the the, val the value of the damped frequency. So the more the 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 bigger this number is, you're gonna get the smaller oscillations. All right. Look at the at B. In this case, you instead of moving the poles up, you're gonna move them to the left but keep the, um, the value of the damping in here and you move them to the left in here. The frequency is the same, but look at the response. So if, he, if, if you move the, the poles to the left, the system becomes slower. Wait a second. The system becomes faster, and then if you if you do the um, the one of uh, if you move it over here, then the system becomes slower. See here now if you move it on a diagonal like that, you take the same overshoot, but do you see the the frequency goes higher? 
as you go left. Same thing here, the frequency will go higher. I mean, the yeah, so we have it in one, two, and three. Yeah, system. See, do you see closer to the axis, the system is slower. Farther from the axis, the system is faster. That's another thing that you need to remember from this discussion today. Again, another view of the same thing about the location of the poles and this uh, on this plane with the response of that example. Here are some examples that you find in chapter four. You, this is the kind of thing that <coughs> not on this, you know, on a coming quiz on this topic, I will, I will tell you, you know, this is the <coughs> system, find the transfer function and modify the poles and the zeros a certain way to make the system do that. If you have them in here, you see, this is what you will see. If you have those two and this, then you will, um, you, you can modify to try case one, or if you move this one to the left, try case two. Do you see case one does this? But case two is faster, see here? Or case three, if you move them over here. So I think over and over you are seeing with many <coughs> of this, uh, how the responses. I, if I were you, you should go to MATLAB and modify those coefficients to see this kind of uh, response just so that you get convinced that in fact by doing this you could you could you could make it do what you want see different different kind of um, response slower faster you know higher overshoot there's another one for example the effect of adding a zero to a two pole system because you know the, the numerator also, it's important. So if you have a zero at, at yeah, I'm here, <coughs> you'll get this answer. You get the zero at minus 10, you'll get the black one. Zero at minus five, you'll get the blue. And zero <coughs> at minus three, you'll get this. So uh, this, this increases the overshoot if you uh, if you increase the the um, zero value okay this is different system to try um, but the, the the message is the same you know what changes can we do something like this you say what you see you can see it just as a matter of, of review here. <coughs> you already know how to obtain the transfer function between the output and the input in here by using this operational amplifier. Same thing over here. Um, just to, to do a, a <coughs> change like in this uh, step response with different changes. Finally, for example, if you have a transfer function, now that we are in this idea of modifying things, um, you have this transfer function like this, and then you could, you could actually do something else outside the transfer function. Here, here, here's, here's the idea here. You see, this is your transfer function here, and then we're going to, we're going to do something. We're going to increase and put another blocking here, which in fact is a, another, which in fact is the controller in this case. And instead of having this response, 
this without saturation, without this block, <coughs> you're gonna have it like this. What's the point over here? The point here is that by adding other blocks to the transfer function, we are modifying the system. Those so-called other blocks that I am mentioning right now are the control systems. But so you see how easily we are going from knowing a transfer function of a syst physical system to a physical system with control. So what I would say in the future lectures is that if we add a type of controls, we definitely will affect the output. And that's exactly what control systems do. In here, you can see the if, if you, instead of the one that you put in here, we added this other two, depending, you know, we're tweaking this. And we, we will go from this one to the blue. Or if we have, if we want to make it do this, some backlash in here, different, different transfer functions in here. For example, this in integration uh, block dumps the oscillations. I uh, mean the uh, no the integration block block uh, makes the um, corrects the state state error but produce the oscillations here S excuse me uh, but if we put the saturation we'll make it do this see eh? so there are ways to change all all this uh, your book has this kind of an example in there and you can do several things in here I would close this by showing you that if you have the transfer function of the vehicle in here you can put this you can do a, a feedback sensing you could add this other and in the modified completely the output and that's the whole objective of transfer function of control systems is to modify the original response of the system to the one that we would like to have So let's stop.